What's up guys, welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to teach you guys about scrolling backgrounds and how to make one in JavaScript using HTML canvases. This video is going to be split up into three parts. The defining, the interval, and the image. So, the image is in my opinion the best part of all this because it is so much fun just to draw a nice image but we're going to do that last because we I always love to save the best for last so what we're going to start off is we're going to define our canvas which you see I have done right here but these numbers right here are important width and height you're going to want to remember these numbers my width is going to be 500 pixels long and the height is going to be 500 pixels as well so it would be a perfect square an even perfect square so next up what we do is we call the script tag in HTML this will basically allow us to put our JavaScript code inside we define the canvas by getting the canvas element we defined right here and we get a CTX which is the context of 2D images because we are going to make 2D shapes or backgrounds. You see I left some notes in here. This is basically what we're going to work on. We're going to have three backgrounds or as how I abbreviate them BG. So how am I going to make this scrolling and why do I need three backgrounds? Well I worked on a little animation to show you guys that will explain how the scrolling works. We are going to have three backgrounds and whenever we're moving them once one background moves off to the side we put it to the front but we are only going to be able to see the first two backgrounds which when you run it it looks infinite but everything just becomes pure whenever we add the background and it just looks amazing. So that is how we are going to do this infinite scrolling background. We're just going to give the illusion that we're scrolling when really we're just taking the background that is in the back and moving it to the front every time it is out of our sight. So let's go ahead and define our three backgrounds. We're first going to define the first one, which is going to be var bg1. And that's going to be our first background. We're going to define it as an object. But remember when I told you to memorize these numbers? Width and height, that's where the, the numbers are going to come into play. My width is going to be defined as, of course, the name width, and it's going to be 500 pixels wide. And so, we're also going to define height, which is also going to be 500 pixels long. And then, here is where it gets tricky. But when you think about it, it's not that hard. The X and Y are where on the screen you want to draw it. The X is left to right. The Y is top to bottom. If your X is 0, it is on the far left. If your Y is 0, it is on the top. So if we set my X to 0 for the first background and my Y to 0 for the first background, it would draw it in the corner filling up the entire screen because of course that is how big my background is. Next we can make our second background BG2. We're also going to make that an object and we could basically copy the first part of my BG1. The width and the height are the same. Here's where it gets just a tad bit tricky. You see this width number. The width is 500. So we're going to take our last BGX and add the width. So the X is 0 in BG1. 0 plus 500 is now x equals 500. So we're going to do that with bg2. The x will be 500. And the y is going to stay 0. And then the same thing for bg3. We're going to have the width 500, height 500, and the x. Here we go back to bg2. 500 plus the width. 500 plus 500 is, of course, 1,000. And then the Y is going to stay 0. 
Here we make an interval. This basically repeats whatever is inside this function every amount of milliseconds as you choose. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to take the x of every one of our backgrounds and subtract it by 20. This will make the backgrounds move left. So if we add a character, that will give off the appearance of it looking like it will move right. So for every background, we take the x and we subtract it by 20. But we do minus equals just so the background now becomes what it would be minus 20. And so here is where we check if a background is in the back. What we do is we take bg1.x. So that will be 0. We take its x of bg1. That would be 0. And we add the width of bg1. So 0 plus 500 is, of course, going to be 500. And so that basically checks on the far right side of the first background. And if it's less than 0, that means it is now off screen. So we check if background 1 is off screen. If it's off screen, we take the background x and we change it to be the background farthest and the right. So if we have the order 1, 2, 3, BG1 would be first, BG2 would be second, and BG3 would be third. So BG3 is now on the far right. So we take the x of BG1 and we turn it into BG3x plus its width. So that'd be basically moving BG1 to the far right side of BG3. So now BG1 is moved all the way to the front. But we have to check the same thing with every background. So here's how I do it. Now that background 1 is in the front, it is now the far right side. So background 2.x will be the far right side of background 1. So we just copy this code for everything and just change the variables. So now our last one, bg3, now bg2 would be in the front. So we do, so we turn bg3's x to the far right side of bg2. So now we got an infinite loop of whenever one background is in the off, is off screen, we move it to the front. And it will keep doing that for every background. So now it is infinite. But here comes the fun part, you guys. It is time to design our image. You guys are going to have a bunch of fun with this like I did. My image is going to be this one. I'm going to use this nice tree background. Make sure that if you're drawing anything, make sure it is the same on the right, same on the left. Because if we have a mountain like right here, and then it starts down here, the cut between them will not look infinite. It will look like we go here boom it starts here again so we want to look infinite so let's say you have a mountain here half of a mountain that goes here and then we take the other half going here too whenever we make the new image it'll look like this half of the mountain is connecting with this half and it'll make it look infinite in mountains so that's exactly what i did here I made this stuff in the middle of the screen and made the outer edges infinite. So whenever you're moving, whenever you're moving, it will not like cut off. It does cut off. It would just not be as recognizable because they're basically infinite, even here on the steps. And so what we do is we're going to define our background variables. We're going to do var bg image that's going to be the variable name and we set that to a new image make sure you have a capital i not a lowercase one and we make it as a function because javascript automatically has this function that sets it to an image so we make a function we add the semicolon and now we get the src which is basically the file pass so we do bgimage.src 
equals and then we do the name of the image make sure you also enter the file type so mine will be infinite as shown right here infinite dot png now we just defined our image as a variable name bg image now we're going to come to interval and we're going to draw it three times the first time is going to be where bg1 is at second time is going to be where bg2 is at third time is going to be where bg3 is at so we do ctx which if you remember is our context for 2d images that we define for the canvas ctx dot draw image this will basically draw an image the image is going to be bg image bg image make sure all the capitals are correct bg image where do we want to put it the x for bg image is going to be bg1 dot x so it's always going to be the x of bg1 and then we're also going to have bg1 dot y so oh it's starting to play the reason it looks like this is because we didn't define every uh background yet so it just draws our background one and it looks weird because we didn't define the other ones so we go here copy all our code and paste it in three more times two more times and so this is going to be all our backgrounds you notice that it still looks the exact same this is because we didn't make it for every background object so the second draw image is going to be for bg2 and the third draw image is going to be for bg3 and now we get the smooth effect of an infinite scrolling screen now you see whenever one of these gets off camera off screen it will move back to the front but because it's so smooth you don't see it happening so it just keeps being moved to the front and it infinitely looks like it's scrolling this is just a matter of illusion so if you had a little guy running here it'll look like he's running right instead of left because if you were running left wouldn't the background move farther from you so if you were running right the background does look like it's moving farther from you so this is a successful scrolling background thank you guys for watching please subscribe if this was helpful if this was successful for you add a comment say tell me how your coding project ended up and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.